hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name is jason newland and this is relax and sleep hypnosis daily thank you for listening and please only listen when you can safely close your eyes now please get comfortable either sitting in a comfortable chair which supports your body or lie down on a flat surface such as a bed or maybe a sofa now if you're listening specifically just for the relaxation I suggest you don't lie down because there's a greater chance of falling asleep and it's not really anything to do with me it's more to do with your body recognizes you know the muscle memory recognizes that when you lay down especially on your bed um, it's time to go to sleep and there's even those environmental cues that are there which we're not necessarily aware of but it all adds to the situation so looking at the same furniture in the room just you know the, f the physical feeling of the familiar pillow underneath your head supporting your head and your neck uh, the feeling of the bed supporting your body because all you know beds do feel different different beds and you you get that familiarity and the bed covers or the quilt that's on top of your body uh, I, li I like to cuddle my quilt perhaps I need to get a girlfriend but hey uh, so there's those cues of familiarity in your environment which all add up towards kind of what happens next is your brain starts to think oh, it's time to sleep that's why it's sometimes not always easy to lie down on a bed and read as as it might be to sit in a chair now it might be a little bit different if you live in a room and you know you've got a bed and that's what you sit on and that's where you eat on and that's where you read and everything else uh, and I've lived like that for many years in the past so you know watching telly all the things you might do whilst in bed or on the bed so there's more things but if you have your bedroom and that's this is one thing that can actually help you to sleep better is to not do anything else when you're in your bed other than maybe some of the nicer things in life if you're if you're lucky enough but maybe not to watch television in bed maybe to not read in bed to not sit up in bed eating so that the bedroom is really just the place you go to generally to go to sleep And then those, as I said, the environmental cues that are there, like the, I don't know if you've got wallpaper or if there's a plant in there or if there's the, even just the, the lampshade, uh, the set of drawers, the carpet, maybe the look of the carpet, the feel of the carpet underneath your feet, um, the, the procedure that you may have that you do every time maybe you know uh, cleaning your teeth going to the toilet maybe washing washing your face whatever you do whatever your um, routine is prior to going to sleep uh, walking and maybe turning the lights off in your flat or in your house make sure when the television's off and maybe closing the doors if that's what you do and then going into your bedroom and maybe sitting down on the 
side of the bed taking your socks off or taking your shoes off or your slippers whatever you've got on your feet maybe you take all your clothes off maybe you change into pajamas maybe you don't whatever is your routine and that routine is almost like a slide on a playground or in a fair you know you you push yourself off the top of the slide and the rest of it just happens naturally you don't need anything other than gravity to push you down the slide to the bottom there's no not really any thought goes into it it's like when you do your shoelaces up it's so embedded in our memory our muscle memory and everything that we don't need to think about it uh, the same as when people are driving most of the driving activities uh, process is automatic because people do it so often it becomes automatic so the process of leading from deciding to go to bed And all the different things you do between deciding to go to bed and actually lying down on your bed. Is automatic. Although you're doing it and you know you're doing it, but it's almost automatic. Because generally we do things in a certain order. Maybe not because we're per consciously thinking of it needs to be done in that order, but if we do the same thing every evening or whenever you go to bed and it's the same process, it's the same activities every day, year in, year out, it becomes automatic like sliding down the slide effortlessly and really without thinking and everything you do leads to falling asleep it's almost like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 4, 3, 2, 1 and the last thing perhaps you do really is you lie down on your bed And then there's the process of getting comfortable. Now, I know for a fact that there's a few, a good few people listening to this that will have physical, uh, maybe chronic pain issues or some kind of physical issue, which means, you know, I can't say to everyone, lay down on your back and go to sleep. Now, I don't sleep on my back. I sleep on my side so some people would need to put a cushion underneath or a pillow underneath their left leg or underneath their hip or whatever some people need to sleep sitting up in the bed so it's about doing whatever feels right for you preparing to sleep because the more you do that helps you feel comfortable the easier it is for you to relax deeply And the process really is as simple as just being at the top of a slide and just could be, a, I'm thinking of a water slide now. But you do, you just push yourself off the top and you slide all the way down and you're supported and you're safe and you don't have to do anything. 
and every time you go back and walk up the steps to get to the top of that slide and you do the same thing and push yourself off down the slide the same thing happens a thousand times out of a thousand you just go down the slide and then you land at the bottom So when you do get into bed, if that's your chosen thing to do, uh, to you know go to sleep, you get yourself comfortable. Physically, and it's not about finding a position that you're going to stay in for eight hours solid because you won't be I think there's uh, very very few people would just stay still for eight hours I'm sure there are some out there that do but most don't a lot of studies have been done for this and we do move around in our sleep and it's natural. And isn't it interesting that when we're asleep, our unconscious mind takes over our physical movement. Because we're not consciously moving. So we're unconsciously moving from side to side or, uh, you know, getting comfortable. And our unconscious mind can be trusted to keep us safe and to keep us comfortable and if required to move our body into a different position if that's needed for us to have more comfort which means that we don't really need to consciously be too involved and we can have trust in ourselves and in our unconscious mind you know that same part that's responsible for all the other parts of our body working correctly things that we have no we have no conscious control over really so when we're asleep everything is on automatic and that's a good thing. I think that's quite a useful thing because then you realize that you don't actually need to do anything even to prepare to fall asleep. Because the only real difference between relaxing deeply and falling asleep is the actual last bit where you fall asleep. And you don't know you've fallen asleep. And you don't necessarily even know when you're falling asleep. Because it just happens. And as you relax more. And your body, the muscles in your body calm down. And you feel a sense of relief it's almost almost like the pressure of the stress that was there is now vanished and you can just let go but not even consciously you've just it's almost like it's automatically happened as you put trust in your own ability to do something that you were born to do relaxing and falling asleep are two of the things that we can naturally do when we're born there's not many things that we can do we can chew 
well actually chewing is not really a thing that's sucking I guess but we can chew because babies will put toys in their mouth and chew on them so we, we're able to use our mouths for chewing and for sucking we can hear things we can see things we can feel things but as far as actually doing anything crying going to the toilet and sleeping are the three things that we're able to do at birth and sleeping for a baby sleeping is so easy it's the most easiest thing that there is and in order for anyone to fall asleep you need to be relaxed So babies can relax so easily. And you can tell a baby's relaxed because they're so floppy. When they're relaxed and they're happy and they fall asleep. Everything's so loose. Their muscles are loose. They're almost bendy. They just, you know, you have to kind of support them. Especially when they're first born. Because they are so relaxed. The neck is really relaxed when a baby's born. And all the muscles are. Which is why for the first period of time we have to support the head. Because the baby's head's always so much bigger than the body. In comparison. So we're born relaxed we're born being able to sleep easily and very deeply so that's a gift that we have and it's something even if someone's been going through a difficult time lately you know with sleeping issues most of our lives we fall asleep it's fairly easy in fact sometimes the best way to try and fall asleep is to try not to if you want to guarantee falling asleep try to stay awake when you're tired not when you're working because you know the those kinds of distractions can keep you awake but try sitting in a chair or lying down on a bed try and stay awake when you're tired without any kind of distraction or stimulus Because the next thing you'll know is you've woken up and you've been asleep. Another scientific uh, study has shown that people who say that they don't sleep actually have slept. They're just not aware of it. Because of the lack of stimulation, the lack of um, any kind of anything really going on when someone's lying in bed at night time is hard to gauge and also we don't know when we're asleep we perhaps know when we've been asleep But we don't even always know that. But there is a certain feeling. A certain sensation. When you know that you really are relaxing. Like really, really relaxing. Deeply. And 
and you may notice that your mind is drifting. You may notice that you suddenly find yourself almost waking up and being aware of my voice and you realize that you were drifting. And you find yourself drifting again. And each time you drift, and it's almost like a daydream, I guess. It's almost a, a mixture of a daydream leading to a, a proper dream. And each time it seems to last for longer, and eventually it just continues just continues and you relax even more so deeply relaxed so calm and loose and sleeping is just becomes the easiest thing, the easiest thing, and drifting leads to that one moment where you are no longer awake, and we're never really aware of that moment because when it happens, we're asleep. We can be aware of the feeling where you almost sense that your mind is slowing down so much that it becomes quite difficult to have a coherent thought because you may try and think of something but your mind just won't allow it because you're so tired and just automatically drift again feeling so relaxed and calm so loose comfortable, so relaxed, so deeply, deeply relaxed, and as I count from five to one, with each number you can become ten times more relaxed, now. 